the computer. Excellent. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, so as I mentioned, the waiting room and that's all. all right. There we go. Okay, now we have more people in here. Got it. Excellent. All right. So um, as I mentioned, uh, we are the Marine Resources Council, and we are located here in Palm Bay, and we work in this blue building off of Highway One, kind of by FIT campus. And we are a nonprofit that uh, was established in 1983 by a group of Florida Tech professors. And we are dedicated to protecting and restoring the Indian River Lagoon through science, restoration, and education. So before I start introducing our education programs, I kind of want to give everyone a background on the Indian River Lagoon, what it is, why is it important to the area? Why are we dedicated to protecting and restoring it? And this introduction is the introduction that I give almost every single one of our education program presentations. Um, because even if someone uh, is pretty well versed in the Indian River Lagoon, they might not actually know kind of more of like the fine facts about it. Um, so it is a massive area of Florida. It is more than 30% of Florida's East Coast. And this picture right here pops it out so you can see all five counties that border the Indian River Lagoon system. Notice that I said system and not just Indian River. Um, there's Brevard County, so you can see that we're kind of smack dab in the middle of the Indian River Lagoon system. And this entire system is 156 miles long, which is almost 3,000 football fields in length, or basically going from Melbourne to Disney World and back. So it's a huge area. And the reason why it is so big is because it's actually comprised of three main bodies of water. So the first one, um, as I mentioned, that people are very familiar with the Indian River, which is this very large portion. But people may not be as familiar with the other bodies of water that are in the Indian River Lagoon system. Does anybody know what that one is? Uh, feel free to chat, uh, send the chat in. Okay, all right, so this one, I'll give you guys a hint. <laughs> So we're gonna move on. This one right here, this is the next body of water. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so we have the Banana River and we have the Mosquito Lagoon. And because it's such a massive area, it is actually an estuary of national significance, meaning that it is so important to our area, either environmentally or economically, that it has been dubbed by the EPA as nationally significant. It supports more species than almost anywhere else on Earth. It supports over 4,300 different species of plants and animals, and even 56 that are endangered or threatened. And because it is supporting so much life and it expands a huge area, it is a community centerpiece. A lot of people love living on the lagoon. It's beautiful, there's so much life. And because there is so much life, there are abundant fisheries. And with the abundant fisheries, we always have a lot of recreation and tourism. And the lagoon overall is about $7.8, $7.6 billion to the regional economy. So it supports hundreds of jobs. It provides a lot of income for a lot of different people. It's able to do this because it was once a naturally resilient system. And that was due to its abundant mangrove forests and vast seagrass beds but we have changed the lagoon. What you're looking at right here on the left is a picture in St. Lucie. Um, and you can see all those little white speckles are different buildings and houses. You can see that there's not a lot of green foresty area. It's mostly developed, a lot of changes to it. And all those changes are going to have storm drains. And these storm drains can be a really big issue because we don't have our natural permeable surfaces anymore. We have a lot of hardened sur surfaces, so we have a lot more storm water. And this is an issue because in storm water, we're going to have a lot of different kinds of runoff. 
and that means it's going to pick up anything that's nasty and gross on the ground you know trash uh, car oil even things that you might not think that are actually damaging to a water system like grass clippings you're like oh they're natural they should be fine grass clippings can be a huge issue also very fine sediment like that bottom right picture that can cause a lot of issues that can uh, decrease the clarity of the water in the system and so all all this runoff that we have now now that we don't have our abundant forest capturing all that stormwater runoff we end up with a lot of excess nitrogen and phosphorus which are known as limiting nutrients um, or nutrients that aren't in very high abundance in a natural environment and this is all the different kinds of pollution and stuff. And so once that is in the water system, we can end up with an algae bloom. Now, algae, microscopic algae little guys, are naturally found in marine environments or freshwater environments and are very important. However, when they get that excess nutrients, they are like, oh my God, this is the best. They are going to explode in growth. And we end up with our algae blooms. So the picture on the left, all of that is the algae. Um, and then on the right, this is also algae. So there was microscopic organisms that exploded in growth so much that you can see it through aerial imagery or even with your naked eye. On the right picture, the green algae, a lot of kids actually will think that that almost looks like grass and they think that it's uh, something you can walk on. And that's, no, that's just an algae mat. So much algae that it is just looks like it's solid. However, so once we have all that large algae growth, eventually the algae will die, maybe they'll reach a carrying capacity, um, or like a disease will come into their algae bloom and they'll start dying off. Once they start dying off, sorry, uh, once they start dying off, uh, we get a decrease in oxygen. And when we have that decrease in oxygen, we end up with a fish kill. And that can be a major issue because as those fish start to die and decompose, they sink to the bottom and kind of add to that nasty stuff that you find on the bottom of the lagoon. In addition to the algae blooms and the fish kills um, and the excess nutrients that come in stormwater, we get a lot of that very fine sediment that would have been trapped by natural systems, um, but now we're just rushing into the lagoon uh, through storm drains and uh, paved areas. I want to kind of introduce you to the difference between normal sediment and muck. So our normal sediment is mostly going to be like, uh, it's going to be mostly sand and then it's going to have a very small amount of silt or clay, that very fine sediment, um, and a very small amount of organic nutrients. So anything that was once living and now is dead, something that's carbon-based. Whereas muck is going to be very, very fine sediment. Um, it's going to be very easily suspended. It's kind of like taking like a big jar of glitter and throwing it up in the air. It gets everywhere. It's going to have a lot of organic nutrients because it's kind of just trapping everything in because it's so fine. It'll settle out and kind of compact down. And this is a picture of our beautiful muck that we have in the lagoon. It's pretty gross. So this is a video of um, the muck. Um, but I also have my muck jar here. So you can see it is the genuine IRL muck. And you can see how just moving it a little bit kind of starts suspending the sediment. It's very, very, very fine. And then, so you can see that it's very easily suspended. Uh, you can see how dark it is too. And so that means that no sunlight is going to penetrate through a very windy day. You can see how dark that jar got just from tipping it a little bit. And this is an enclosed system. So imagine what it's like in the lagoon. This will take probably two days for it to fully settle out if I don't touch it for the rest of the day. So that shows you how easily suspended the muck is. And here's another video of it so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, Zoom's a little choppy with playing videos, but it looks like this is going okay. So you can see that it's very easily suspended. And so if the muck is suspended in the water column, the sunlight can't penetrate, which means that the seagrass can't photosynthesize. And if we don't have our seagrass, we lose our natural habitats and we get fish die-offs as well. 
but this is a comparison of a healthy and an unhealthy uh, system. And you can think about which one do you think the lagoon is? So in a healthy system right here, there's our unhealthy. Our healthy system is going to have our beautiful mangrove forest, lots of natural habitat. The water is going to be clear enough so we have our oysters to filter. We're going to have our seagrass, which is producing lots of oxygen. And we're going to have a healthy population of microplankton. In an unhealthy system, we're not going to have our natural habitat. So we might have crop cultivation. We might have cows that are producing manure, which can go into the water. We don't have our oysters anymore. Seagrass have really degraded, so we don't have a lot of oxygen in our system. And we have an abundance of uh, phytoplankton. And of course, once the phytoplankton die off, we end up with fish kills. So think about which one our system is. What does the MRC do? Well, we do science, restoration, and education. Um, just for the late joiners, uh, we are located in this building. Uh, we're located in Palm Bay off of Highway 1. And we are a nonprofit dedicated to protecting and restoring the Indian River Lagoon through science, restoration, and education. So I just want to introduce some of our science projects. Um, our first one is Lagoon Watch. And it is a citizen scientist program that's been going on for 30 years now. And uh, just regular people go out into the lagoon and they do water quality testing uh, once a week. And um, they test for dissolved oxygen, salinity, uh, pH, clarity, wind direction, and wave size. And we use all this information to try to direct management uh, programs for the lagoon and different restoration projects, which are super important. Uh, we also have a program called Muck Finders, which is again a citizen scientist program, which is that one right there, where we literally go around into the lagoon and we use a giant PVC pole to test the muck depths uh, around the lagoon. And even though this is a super simple process, it's actually really accurate. And we've um, compared uh, using the PVC pipe to different uh, equipment, like electronic equipment, um, and we found that the PVC pole is just as good as the electronic equipment. So it's been verified, which is great. Um, and we use this to help prioritize dredging projects throughout the lagoon. We also do a groundwater project, which is there on the right. And we monitor groundwater throughout the county to evaluate nutrient loading. Um, and you can see the wells right there. And there's a canal in the back of that picture. And that shows you how close our groundwater is to our different waterways. So if there's something nasty in the groundwater, it could easily seep into the lagoon. So we're testing to see are people's septic tanks working? Are there leaky sewer lines? That kind of thing. So then we also do res restoration. And we have a really beautiful mangrove nursery here at the Lagoon House with over 500 mangroves. And we, um, before COVID-19, we used to host monthly workshops. And so hopefully eventually we'll be able to get back to doing that. Um, and they're open to the public. And we have people come in and they help with up potting and weeding um, and maintaining our mangroves. And we definitely rely on volunteer assistance. And we've also done a lot of shoreline planting. So we planted almost a mile of shoreline in 2018, and we have more planned in the future, which is very exciting. And so here we are with education. Um, we have a lot of great school programs that we've developed in the past year. Um, we also host field trips here to the Lagoon House. And we just developed our virtual learning programs uh, this past March. Um, and we've had a lot of great success with those so far. We typically host summer camp. Um, summer camp is definitely going to be on hold and maybe adapted this year um, with our Lagoon Summer Snippets, which I'm really excited to introduce you to. And we also host brown bag presentations, which is that bottom left picture. You can see that there's a lot of people there. Um, so we have now turned our brown bag presentations into uh, Zoom webinars. Um, and we are posting them after they've been recorded onto YouTube. So if you want, we already have one recorded and it's all about manatees and it's really great. Um, we also host rain barrel workshop and we have assemblies, conferences and meetings. All right, cool. So um, I want to introduce you to some of our school programs, which are going to be probably the most beneficial to you all. Um, and one of our biggest 
programs that we do with education is our Lagoon Loyal or Let's Be Clear campaign. And this is an uh, educational pr program or a campaign from Brevard County. And it's the MPDES or Stormwater Discharge Community Education Requirements. So Brevard County contracted the MRC to do education programs throughout the county. And so we have nine different partners and cities. And we do 22 outreach presentations, 19 adults, and 121 school age presentations that we have to complete within one year. And we also have to mark 500 storm drain. So because we're partnered with Brevard County, we have free in-classroom programs if you are one of our partners or within Brevard County. So it's very exciting and we're very happy to offer them. Um, so far, these are our remaining free programs that we have available um, from our last contract started uh, October 1st, 2019, and it's going to go to September 30th, 2020. Um, so we have four free programs left for Cape Canaveral, four left for Cocoa Beach, 40 for Melbourne, and six for West Melbourne. However, uh, starting October 1st, 2020, so this year, and we're already starting to reserve uh, free programming for you all. Um, so if you are a school that's located in one of these areas and you would like to schedule your programming, even if though we're uncertain about the COVID situation, we'd much rather have you scheduled so that we reserve your spot. So Brevard County, we have about 38 uh, presentations available, but this is subject to change. Um, so this is if you're in like Palm Bay or if you're up in Titusville, um, this would be qualify as your area. Um, same with the rest of them. We have Cape Canaveral, Cocoa, Cocoa Beach, Grant Valkaria, Indian Harbor Beach, Melbourne, and West Melbourne. So you can see that we do have a lot of uh, free programs available starting October 1st, but they do fill up quickly. Um, so if you're interested in scheduling one, it's best to uh, uh, do that sooner than later. Let's see, I'm just gonna chat notification. Okay, all right, cool. So um, this is one of my favorite programs. It's called the Enviroscape, and it's about 30 minutes. Um, and it's great for smaller groups, uh, about 15 uh, kids, uh, great for pre-K to first or second grade. I started off with an introduction story called uh, Mermaid Meg and the Magical Lagoon, and I read the story to the kids, um, and then we discuss it, and we talk about it, uh, what happened to Mermaid Meg, how is the environment, and then we do the Enviroscape, which are the pictures on the right-hand side, um, and it's like a cityscape, and we put out different buildings, and we talk about are there more buildings, are there more trees, and then we start putting out different kinds of pollution. So we use like chocolate sprinkles for like dirt and we'll use oregano for leaves. Uh, we use chocolate sprinkles for dog waste. And we talk about how dirty and like nasty the environment has gotten. And we talk about what happens when there's a rainstorm and what happens when there's a hurricane. Um, and it's a really great way to kind of drive home the concept of stormwater for the younger kids. Um, so yes, like I said, uh, about 15 kids for this program. Um, maybe about, if you want to book multiple programs, we usually suggest about 10 minutes in between classes so that I have time to clean off the Enviroscape and start it again. Um, our next program is Florida Feast, and we have two options for Florida Feast, and both of them are about 45 minutes. Um, and we recommend this one for grades third through six, and we can take full classes up to 30 students, no problem. Um, and for Florida Feast 1, we have pre and post worksheets and activities, and we have pretty much aligned it perfectly with uh, Florida State standards. Um, everything is always an adjustment, so we're working on it to make sure that it aligns even better. Um, but for Florida Feast 1, um, or excuse me, every program will get an introduction to the Indian River Lagoon, and we do talk about stormwater, and we have to do this so that we qualify for the Brevard County uh, Education Campaign so that we can still offer free programs. So we have to talk about stormwater, um, but then we'll jump into talking about food chain, the energy flow using animals from the Indian River Lagoon. Um, and so that top picture shows you the food web, 
Um, but before we start the food web, I always talk, we have uh, the kids separate into groups and every kid will get a different card and we'll start them off kind of developing uh, their food chain. And so they'll develop a food chain first at their tables and then we'll stand up and we'll develop a food web together. And then we talk about once we have the food chains or the food webs, uh, we talk about what does pollution do to this food web. Um, and it's very exciting. The kids always love it. They love seeing like the big dramatic falling apart uh, once we introduce pollution into the system. Um, perfect. So then Florida Feast 2, which is the bottom right, um, students will learn about some of the different animals that live in and around the lagoon. How they interact and how pollution affects these relationships and so these are this is really looking at like predator prey relationships um, the bottom right picture is them doing a uh, life in the lagoon activity where they take different utensils that represent different animals um, and they have to pick up beads and put them into their stomach and if they eat uh, like pollution or something bad then they have to dump their stomach contents back and they have to start again and so we talk about uh, generalist and specialist predators and how the more we introduce pollution, the more specialists suffer and um, talking about different kinds of relationships like that. Um, the next program is what's in your water or what's in the water. And this is about an hour. Um, and we do recommend it for the older grades, maybe fourth, depending on um, how comfortable they are with sciences um, or fifth and up. And this one also has pre and post worksheets and activities. Um, and we're really working on aligning this with Sunshine State standards as well. Um, and so obviously we have to give the introduction to the Indian River Lagoon and stormwater. And this program is teaching students all about the importance of water quality, why it is important uh, to make repeated investigations and how pollution changes these parameters. And they use real life water quality monitoring equipment. And so here I have some of them. And um, this right here is a refractometer and this tests the salinity or how much salt is in the water. Um, and so we put a little bit of water on top, we close it and we look through and can tell how salty or fresh the water is. And you can see some of the students there uh, using the refractometer. Um, and then we also do different kinds of tests with actual water samples. And so this right here is one of our water samples. Um, and we use these test tabs to test uh, pH, nitrates, and phosphate levels. Um, and so it's really cool that the kids can still do real life science in a very simple way and a very safe way. Um, so I'll show you really quick. So once you pop them out, they come out in these little tabs. And these are the same tabs that they use for um, a day in the life, um, which is when students go around the lagoon and test uh, water quality parameters and different parameters around the lagoon. So we have our test tab at the bottom, and then you just shake it up until it fully dissolves. And you can see that now it's kind of like this greenish color, and you can compare it to the water chart. And so I'm sorry, the color's not coming through perfectly, but you can see that it's about at a level eight, which is what we want because it's ocean water. So pretty cool. So you can see how easy it is. Um, the nitrate and phosphate tests are a little bit more complicated, um, but the kids can really uh, connect to it pretty easy. Um, and then we create a class average and we can talk about the different uh, parameters or the different values that people got, which is really cool. Um, and then we, one of my favorite programs is the Mangrove Matters program. It's about 45 minutes. Um, and it's great for grades about third and up. And also is going to have pre and post worksheets and activities, which we're working on aligning with Sunshine State standards as well. And um, we have our program description. So obviously introduction to the IRL and stormwater. Uh, students learn about different species of mangroves in Florida and their life cycles. Um, and they also learn how mangroves are able to thrive in their unique environment because it's very challenging to live where they do and their importance to lagoon restoration. So I can do that portion of the program at your school. Um, however, if you want to do like different kinds of potting of mangroves or mangrove maintenance, you will need to come to the Lagoon House, which we do charge for because uh, it's reservation of the space. Um, and, or we could do a collection near a shoreline near you, which we do not charge for. 
Um, but this is a really, really fun program. Uh, I like it a lot because it gets kids out there and looking at the different mangrove species and learning about how something like a plant, which normally kids think can be kind of boring, is actually super cool and is uh, highly beneficial to our area. Another program that we have is Lagoonology, which is about 45 minutes to complete. Um, and it's for about grades fifth and up due to some challenging reading on the cards that they use uh, to play the game. Um, so I start off with an intro to the Indian River Lagoon and Stormwater. And then the students play this game where they move their pieces around this huge board. It's a vinyl roll that rolls out. Um, and about 25 kids can fit around uh, the table and they represent different um, sectors of the lagoon. There's business, agriculture, recreation, and community. And they get resources, which you can see on the table right there, are natural resources. So you're gonna have fish, mangroves, manatees, that kind of thing. Um, and then they have action cards. And their action cards are gonna have positive and negative effects on their resources. And it may have a positive or negative effect on someone else's resources. Like let's say business uh, builds a new shopping mall, uh, but it has storm drains that lead directly into the lagoon. Uh, community and recreation lose one resource each, whereas business doesn't lose any. So it kind of shows you this cause and effect relationship of what our actions do to each other and to the lagoon. Um, so just a reminder, uh, these are our availability of free programs left for the, uh, these areas. Um, so when school starts in the fall and if you are able to have uh, in-person presentations um, or if you want to do it through Zoom, we can definitely do it through Zoom as well. Um, but these are available programs. Um, however, starting October 1st this year, we have a lot more availability for free programs and we are scheduling them now. Even if we cannot actually follow through with them due to COVID restrictions, we do recommend that you still reserve your spot because we do fill, fill up quickly. Um, so again, back to the COVID situation, we do have virtual learning programs, which are great. Um, I think they're a lot of fun. Um, I can show you the website in just a second, um, but we recommend these for third or sixth grade. And the videos range from about eight to 17 minutes. We try to keep them kind of on the shorter side to kind of keep kids' interests. Um, and they're recorded presentations that I did. Um, and I use a lot of animations and a lot of silly things to keep kids engaged. And each video is accompanied with a post worksheet and an activity, um, like a word search or a coloring page, except for the last video, which has two options for a project, either doing like an art project, making uh, an animal of their choice and writing a report on it, um, or developing a mangrove restoration brochure. And our program topics cover Indian River Lagoon and Stormwater, Florida Feast, which is about food chains and food webs, uh, we have Mangroves Matter, which talks about ID, um, their life cycles, and the importance of restoration. And then we talk about health state of the lagoon. What are the different things that you can do that make a big impact on the lagoon? So I'm going to show you our web page. We'll see if it will work. Ooh, hopefully I didn't just freeze my computer. Great, excellent. All right. Amanda, can you see the uh, web page? Can anyone see the web page? I cannot. Oh, you I cannot? still okay. see your PowerPoint. Okay, give me one second. But it looks like it's um, uh, working, like it's trying to get to it. Okay. How about now? Now I can, yes. Excellent. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. right. So this is our uh, education web page right here. Um, you can see at the top, save the IRL.org slash education slash virtual learning. Um, it's under the Youth Education pat, uh, tab, and you click on virtual learning. And so here we are on the virtual learning page. Um, so that we can get credit for that stormwater contract with Brevard County, we do ask teachers to please register first um, so that uh, we can track um, the class, uh, the number of classes, the location of the school, and the number of students and the grade. Um, so once we have you registered, we can log in and you'll get to a portal. 
um, that you can either share your login information with your students or you can share the um, the post video activities with them and just right click and share the uh, YouTube URL. These videos are uh, private and unlisted, so you will not be able to find them on YouTube. You have to register so that you can get access to these videos. Um, and it shows you the different programs. We have our recommended grades and the video duration. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea about how long you're going to hope that your students will watch it. Um, and so that was our IRL one. This is our Florida Feast. Um, and you can see that I use a lot of pictures, a lot of fun things. Um, we've had a lot of positive feedback already by the teachers that have signed up for it. Um, and I had a lot of fun making them too. So this is our Mangrove Matters. And then here's Help Save the Lagoon um, with our different uh, activities. So this is the Mangrove Restoration brochure. And then this is the Animal Advocates one. Um, and I can show more about the virtual learning programs and the different activities um, after. Um, I just want to touch on everything else just in case as well. Okay, so stop share. And then let's see, share screen. Excellent. All right. And so um, I did mention that our summer camp uh, is not going to happen in June. It might happen in July, um, but it would definitely be in an adapted version to comply with uh, CDC guidelines. Um, and so we're currently developing our Lagoon Summer Snippets. And these are going to be a little bit different than our traditional education programs because they're not going to be as focused on stormwater. They're going to be focusing on different topics, um, but we're, we're in the very, very beginning stages of developing them. So once we have our Lagoon Summer Snippets, they will turn into Lagoon Saturday Snippets uh, once the school year starts. And these are going to be shorter programs, approximately about 45 minutes. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, maintenance time on the front and the back of an hour. And it's going to be designed to introduce youth to different science or environmental topics. And they're going to be located at the Lagoon House primarily. Um, we may be able to turn these also into Zoom programs as well. Um, and they're definitely going to be focused on like hands-on activities or mini projects for each topic. Um, so either the students or the participants will go out and work with our mangroves, or maybe they'll do like a shell decoration um, or some kind of like art project at the end of it. Um, and we're going to kind of make these much more broader. Um, so they're going to be focusing on ages 8 to 14. Um, and they're designed initially to initially accommodate social distancing and CDC guidelines, so a limit of eight participants. So these are going to be very small, uh, social distance, mostly outside programs. And these are some of our different ideas that we're going to be working on developing and hopefully be launching um, in July. And so you can see that we have a ton of different topics. Um, and because they don't have to focus on stormwater as much, uh, it gives us a little bit more flexibility about what we can present to participants. Um, so I'm really excited about these topics. Uh, I don't know, uh, well, so like they're in the very, very beginning planning stages um, and we're really excited to work on them. Um, so the Lagoon unites us all, let's stand together in protecting it. Um, so if anybody has any questions, um, I'll read through the chat and check them out. Um, or you can email me at Nicole at mrcirl.org or check out our website for more information. Um, and then one last thing for uh, the Lagoon Loyal Let's Be Clear campaign. If you Google Lagoon Loyal, um, you'll see that they have a Lagoon Footprint quiz. Uh, if you participate in it, it takes like two minutes. It's like eight questions. You get coupons for a lot of great businesses in and around the Indian River Lagoon. All right, cool. So I'll, um, hey, we got 20 minutes for questions. Um, and like I said, I can show you any of the other presentations. Um, I can play some of the videos so that people can see what the virtual programs look like or even open up some of the worksheets. Um, so yeah. Nicole, could you go over how do they sign up uh, to get the lessons? To get the virtual learning programs or? Uh, yeah, for their schools. Um, yeah, so if you go to, oh shoot, you can't see this, haha. -ha. Okay. 
your screen. Okay. All right. So if you are at our homepage, if you go to education, youth education, virtual learning, you click on that. There is a register now button right here. Click on that, it takes you to an online form. And you scroll down to the bottom. And this is where the teacher will fill out their contact information. And so we ask that each teacher sign up for it. Um, we do not want teachers to be sharing their login information with other teachers because then we might not get credit for the presentations that we do. And if we aren't hitting our targets for that contract, then it might reduce our funding for offering future free programs. Um, so once the teachers fill out this information, I will get a notification that they have registered. And then I work with our web developer to get them a login and password. Um, and so this, uh, we check to see if people have signed up at 11 and 4 p.m. every uh, Monday through Friday. Um, so if you sign up at like 10 a.m., um, then you'll probably have a login by noon at the latest. So, yeah. All right, so another question, is the virtual programming the same as the, um, I'm trying to read the question. If we do a virtual program, does that make the similarly named live program redundant? Are they the same thing? Some, yes, yes. So they are the same um, for the most part. For um, in the in person programs, I will focus more on doing stormwater first. Um, so this stormwater program right here kind of is like the front introduction to the majority of my in person programs. Um, so like, let's say that you requested me to come into your classroom to teach your students about Florida Feast and doing food chains and food webs. I would first touch on the Indian River Lagoon and stormwater, which would be in this video. And then I would get into the Florida Feast. So if you wanted, you could actually technically uh, sign up for the virtual programs and play this video and do the activities for your students before I arrive. And then I could lead Florida Feast, and then we would do the food chain activity and the food web activity. Does that make sense? That does, yes. Cool. And so the lessons that you would come uh, to the schools, how do they sign up for that? Is that the same process as the virtual programs that you showed us? Um, or is that a different? It is a different. Um, we do ask people to just straight up email me and then we'll coordinate either through phone call or email and I'll set up a uh, Google Calendar event for myself. Um, we are eventually going to move forward with doing like an online sign up, um, but we're not quite there yet. So just okay. email me if you want me to do an in-person presentation. Okay, perfect. And those are the lessons that you said fill up fast, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, they do. Yep. Um, last October, I want to say I did 40 presentations, 30 presentations in one month. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question that they have, uh, so the schools that are in different locations and you're coming from Palm Bay, uh, if we were to come out for a program, can more than one be combined or can one be extended so that it's longer than 45 minutes? Absolutely. So, okay. Um, so I originally my programs were closer to an hour and a half um, and then I realized that it was really difficult for teachers to kind of coordinate and condense the program so or, um, coordinate with other teachers so that they could fit my program in so that's why I've condensed them to 45 minutes um, but they can easily be extended anywhere up to an hour and a half three hours um, and I'm more than happy to just pile on the programs. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So oh, they I'm, would. Oh, go go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Okay. Um. Additionally, if uh you're a teacher that's coordinating with other teachers, if you want me to come in and do like five classes of Florida Feast, not a problem. I will be at your school all day, and I'll just do the presentations back to back. Not a problem. I uh, another question. Uh, so these are the gifted program. So mm -hmm. a lot of the teachers are primarily the teachers are K through six. So if they were to bring their entire program, 
uh, would that work out? Would you be able to accommodate different grade levels? I think or is it just you? It is, it is just me. Um, we are a very small staff. Uh, we have about seven full-time uh, staff mates. Um, I could probably do a class probably second to six. Um, okay but I would recommend not doing the water quality one just because it can be a little difficult and it is a little bit more time consuming um, for the younger kids, unless the older kids are really there assisting the younger kids, um, like filling up these test tubes with water, that takes some time. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, those are all the questions from the chat um, that I saw. Great. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, and so uh, like I said, I do pride our programs on having uh, hands-on activities, getting the kids up and out of their seats um, and working on things. However, you know, those things are going to have to be adjusted uh, with the COVID situation um, and we're constantly adapting and changing our programs. Uh, the virtual programs will be offered uh, forever and ever. Um, I don't see any reason to stop them. Um, and I will type in my email to everyone in the meeting. Um, and please stay tuned for the Lagoon Summer Snippets. I think they're gonna be awesome. I'm really excited about them. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed learning about the MRC, what we do and who we are. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Um, you will convert the video and then send it to me so I can get it out to the teachers that couldn't make it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yep. Um, and so I, oh, <laughs> yep. So I will um, save it, convert it to a YouTube video, and then I will send you the link. Okay, perfect. Will you also add uh, your contact information just so yes. I can put it in the email uh, so they're not looking for it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, if, okay. if, it's, if it's easy to get to, that means more programs get reserved, so. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the teachers? Yes, please use her program, please. Yeah. Everybody. Like, yeah, like I said, um, the three main programs, uh, Mangroves Matters, Florida Feast, and uh, um, What's in the Water are all getting aligned to Florida State standards. Um, we wanna make sure that we're really following them. Um, as of now, they're like basically there, especially the uh, Food Chains Food Web one. Um, so yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much everyone. And I hope everyone's staying happy, uh, healthy and safe. Thank you so much, Nicole, for this time. Uh, it was so beneficial, thank you. Awesome, okay, let's see, we had one more question, but it's not Name City. Yes, if you are not uh, Cape Canaveral, Cocoa, uh, Cocoa Beach, Melbourne, West Melbourne, um, or Indian Harbor Beach, then you fall under the Brevard County one. And so those ones are the ones that really quickly fill up. Um, if you notice that we've completely finished all of our Brevard County programs already, um, and we just have a lot of Melbourne programs left over. Um, so if you are in Brevard County, I do recommend you uh, sign up for programs sooner than later. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much, Nicole. I really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much for having me, Amanda. And thank you very much to all of our participants. I uh, hope you had a good time. And I hope that uh, you got to see all of our cool programs. So thank yes, you. Yes, I'm so excited to see them in our uh, gifted program. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Have a great day. Thank have you, a good rest care. of the week, everybody.